I'm Phil Hill. And I'm Michael Feldstein. And this is eLiterate TV. eLiterate TV is designed for educators, policymakers, and technologists. And it's really intended to be a discussion starter among the various stakeholder groups that are affected by higher education. So what we hope to do is create a multi-level conversation with multiple points of engagement so that all these stakeholders can come together. Well, I think it'd be very useful to look at the broad context of the changes happening. We have some great guests. So how did we get to the point that we're at with the online education? Higher ed will be a lot better off if technology spreads through experimentation by the willing. But very quickly, the MOOC subjects have grown in professional areas, computer science, business. So we have an opportunity to implement, and it could exacerbate certain issues, or we could implement it a different way that will actually address the underlying issues that we need to face. There's a whole world of activity that's going on. Phil, this is an area that you've actually done a lot of reporting on. What are the topics that we're going to be looking for in this conversation? One of the things that we want to understand is what problems are schools actually trying to solve with online education? This is a cultural barrier and it represents the fact that it turns out it's very difficult for a traditional college or university to move into a team-based course design. You really need to make sure that whatever online program you're running is actually designed to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. Sure. If you've exhausted all those other possibilities, then you can begin talking about what we call the safety valve. We're in a whole new world where we're trying out new forms. Some of them are gonna work, some of them are not gonna work. So I'm guessing that from there, with the some of this is going to work and some of it isn't, we go into the conversation about MOOCs. It was just two years ago that the current wave of MOOCs actually started. Of course, it hasn't all been a bed of roses. Increasingly, we're seeing faculty pushback and rising concern about issues ranging from the quality of education delivered in MOOCs to challenges to labor structures in colleges and universities. At Educause 2013, we spoke with Amy Collier of Stanford University to get her perspective on MOOCs. I would say the vast majority of MOOCs that have come out of Stanford began as a result of faculty interest in trying a new teaching approach in their Stanford class. So the flip class has had a lot of momentum at Stanford. Faculty, for one, realized that from uh, an efficiency standpoint, if I'm giving the same lecture every year, this gets boring and it's not a great use of my time. However, if I am finding ways to use the classroom in a really active way, it's more exciting for me, it keeps my students more interested, I see gains as a result. And so that model has really resonated with Stanford faculty. In this episode, we're looking at what is courseware and who's providing it. So you have this new area developing that overlaps platforms, content, and curricular design. And it's this area that we're calling courseware. At Educause 2013, we had the opportunity to talk to several people who are involved in creating some of this new courseware to get their perspective. We're going to stop and make a fundamental change from a traditional textbook, evaluate new digital materials, whether it's packaged neatly into an open textbook or whether it's a range of resources. Published textbooks tend to be a superset of what anyone will teach. That's quite intentional it's so that it's useful to many people. We don't want to include chapters they're not going to teach. Students are confused by optional materials. It tends to add noise to the system. So we really want to tailor it. There are a lot of different things we might mean by analytics and by adaptive software, a lot of different ways in which the software can help the teacher to react to the student appropriately. Sure, and it's not just the teacher, of course, that benefits or could potentially deal with um, learning analytics in particular. There are institutional needs for learning analytics. At Educause 2013, we had the opportunity to talk to McGraw-Hill's Al Essa and Pearson's Jason Jordan about this new movement in EdTech. Our goal should be to create a beautiful student experience. So anytime you create a great 
experience, users will gravitate towards it. As soon as we started developing technology products, we had a window into how students were using the products. We could collect that data and use that data to make the products better. So better teaching tools and better learning tools. And we recognized that was going to be a really powerful development tool for us. Right, so you're talking about a feedback loop. Sure. Which is something that a good teacher wants to have with their own class as well. So that's eLiterate TV. We're really excited about it. We'll be starting with video at the core of the experience, thanks to our co-producers in the telling, who are applying techniques that they call documentary instruction. Using the Telling Story platform, we'll be able to embed different levels of further reading and resources so that different stakeholders who have different levels of interests and different kinds of interests can find the content that they want to explore more. That's eLiterate TV, a co-production within the telling. Coming to a desktop or mobile device near you. And cut. And one more time, Bill, big punch. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I just want to point out, I'm camera one, you're camera two. Okay. Just so we're clear. So just you say less. Sir. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's our report on at see, you win. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's all about psychological yeah, warfare. Right, yeah. oh, I'm starting yeah. to get this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>